All right, we're going ahead. I went ahead and took all the bolts out of here. We'll just lift that cover plate off. And since we already brought this up to top dead center, um, for this side, we're going to pull this off. Got a O-ring down here at the bottom. If you look down inside here, you can see four Allen screws there, Allen bolts. I think they're 3 16 Yeah, they are. So we need to pull them off. We'll completely remove two. We'll leave the other two just hanging in there. Well, shouldn't have done that. We'll fix that though. Put that one there. Okay, we got them both loose. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of pick them up a little bit so we can pinch them like that and raise it up out of there so we got that we have a thin little gasket and then you can look down in there and you can see a big castle nut we need to go and get ourselves a socket to go fit on that and i can't remember the size so let's pause it and i'll go find the right one all right what we got is an inch and five sixteenths nut down there so i take my three quarter inch and that thing's in there generally pretty tight here we are There it is. I have, I think, two thrust washers. Maybe it's just one, I can't remember. Yep. Difficult to come out. Let's just pull the piston out. Just reach down here and grab the piston. Pull it right out. And I have one thrust washer. You see here, I got four piston rings. And on the inside is a stainless steel retainer ring. That's it, just pretty simple. Just like other, just by basic piston assembly in any motor we want to stagger everything and these things are pretty flexible and so what we're going to do is we're going to drop this back down and get both of them to want to line up to drop in I don't know if what we can see, what you can see here. But do you see how they lap? Right here is like two L's coming together. Squeeze it together. And if you squeeze them together and you see that gap, let's just say for approximation that's a half inch lap. If you squeeze these together and you've got a gap close to a quarter of an inch, right here or right here it's time to replace your piston ring uh the corkin manual i believe says 50 percent something like that when the wear is 50 percent, so you can see that overall that's really these rings are not that old everything's in really good shape and so we just want to make sure they're staggered like any you would do any other one but these are not really super stiff like you'd have on a car they're pretty pretty light so usually what i do is i just 
get my hand in there one way or the other and then as you line it up you give them a little squeeze and just a little wiggle and just do everything slow and easy get it to drop make sure your thrust washer goes right back down you make sure everything's seated out it's really pretty good so now we're going to take our essentially castle nut put that on there and now I'm going to tighten that down I believe the cork and manual recommends you do this once a year now we got Crank that thing down nice and tight. Now we've got our little gaskety plate here. Let's get it to where it's pretty much lined up. Everything's big, but there's still a lot of slop. We just got to make sure that when we drop our little screws in that they'll line up without fighting us too much so now we're getting ready to drop now we got to pay attention to where everything's kind of lined up so when we drop this cover back in we can just get pretty well lined up and FYI I suck at this it usually takes me two or three tries no matter how hard I try to get these right maybe I'll try this angle all right all right all right Let's try it that Looks good. And if you got daylight or a flashlight, you should be able to line up and look at these other two holes as you as you line in. There we go. Try to get all the cussing out of your system before you get starting too far, because man, it'll it'll dry it, bring it right out of me. So it pays to be very patient and be patient with yourself doing this. And we'll just tighten these in. All right, those are looking good. Comes to this, I mean these don't really move. What I generally do, if I'm just taking these off and I'm just looking, is I'm gonna get some Vaseline and I'm just gonna rub Vaseline around in here and roll these back up to the top and I'll do it on this one too. Got a truck coming in. Here we are. This is also your last chance to just confirm 
nothing's distorted nothing's flat nothing's cut and then we'll just wipe down and this one here I've always gotten stuff in here moisture of all different kinds gets inside here this top plate that goes on here it's not sealed with anything there's no o-ring or anything or gasket on top of here and it's just normal heating you know heating and contracting pulls in moisture um it's not uncommon to get stuff in there it's not necessarily a sign you got something going wrong There we are. Good to go. Okay. No wear. I mean, I mean, there's a little bit of build up here, but there's no wear, no grooves, no cuts, no nothing in my cylinder wall. And that, and now all I have to do is put my bolts back in, and that's really what there is to it if you ever want to pull and check your piston rings, which of course is something Corkin recommends you do uh, once a year. I replaced all of my um, all of my piston rings and retainers. I replaced them two years ago like I said I had trouble with the packing barrel on this one and so when I had it all apart my wear and nothing was really worn too bad not really but I figured I all had it all apart let's just put in new ones when it comes to the intake and discharge valves the old style of valve that they had was essentially um, a metal the valve inside the material that moved was metal. They switched on the 891s two or three years ago. They switched to a material called Peak. And Peak has a far superior heat distribution. So they, they last a lot longer. Like I said, in the past, I used to change these once a year. Both, I mean, all eight valves once a year. Right now, I'm looking at about once every two years. I'm, uh, I have to run this machine and the next machine, I should be able to get all of this year and then next uh, summer, I'm going to start pulling these and I'm going to start looking at them. I would rather spend the money and just keep good quality valves all the time simply because I only want to take these things apart once and not just keep doing it and not just keep repairing things as they go bad. And they're expensive. By the time you pay for the uh, the valve, your two O-rings, your crush gasket, provided this doesn't get damaged, provided that a uh, lock nut doesn't get damaged, and your cage stays good, you're close to $900 a valve, maybe a little bit more. So if I can go two solid years and maybe three years before I have to change valves out, that's money ahead but if I have to change them every two years then it's every two years I just do not want to push it I want to keep these machines as high efficiency as possible and do it in such a way that it doesn't bankrupt me and eat up my profits so I'm gonna go ahead and reset all of these like I showed you earlier there's no gasket there's no nothing it's just metal to metal so that's why it's not that big of a deal when you get condensate like that or discoloration inside here. So that's it.